Hey guys, what's up? It's Dan, and uh, today it's not going to be the usual gaming video that I usually put up on my channel. Uh, it's going to be a video about a major trend that's been going around Facebook, Twitter, and any other uh, popular social network. I'm not even joking. If you don't have a Facebook account, go ahead and make one and add up some friends and you'll see what I mean. This thing is huge. Coney 2012 is basically a campaign uh, that was started by a controversial activist group, and it's not for profit, and it's called Invisible Children. And I'm saying controversial for many reasons, just keep watching this video and you'll see. Basically, uh, the CEO of Invisible Children, along with his other friend filmmakers that are part of the uh, activist group, uh, they came together and they made a short film called Coney 2012, uh, and it's about 30 minutes long, if you want to go watch it, I'll link it down in the video, uh, in the description bar. But it's about a guy named Joseph Coney who has 30,000, that's what they say, that he has 30,000 child soldiers in Uganda and uh, other parts of the region, and he basically has his own rebel group called the Lord's Resistance Army, where these child soldiers fight, and he doesn't have a cause or anything. Apparently, according to the video that uh, Invisible Children made, uh, the LRA, the Lord's Resistance Army, fights for no cause, so they just kill people, rape people, uh, you know, steal from people for no reason, just for the fun of it. This is Invisible Children's 11th video on Joseph Coney, so I'm guessing they made 10 other ones because nobody really, you know, took the time to watch them, and this year they got lucky, and, you know, with Facebook and everything, uh, it rapidly spread, and now uh, hundreds of thousands of people know about Joseph Coney and how horrible he is and everything. The goal of their campaign, Coney 2012, is to basically stop Joseph Coney, who is apparently today's Hitler and today's source of all evil. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but that's how they portray him. Um, they want him stopped by by the end of this year, I think, or I think it was by April 20th, 2012, or something like that. But uh, they're, they're handing out posters, and you can like buy uh, an action kit or something on their website, uh, which contains a poster, bracelets, and all that other merchandise. Last year, in 2011, Invisible Children spent $8,676,614, and uh, those were uh, the, the activist group's expenses, and only 32% uh, of that money went to direct charity services. So, only 32% of that money actually went to Africa and to the kids in Africa. And not even all of the 32% went to the kids in Africa. I'm guessing only about 10 to 15%, maybe even less. But I'll tell you why soon, so just keep watching. The other part of the around $9 million in expenses uh, went toward staff salaries, travel and transportation, and most of all, film production. So Invisible Children is really interested in outputting films and raising awareness and all that. But, I mean, now I just think there's way too much awareness. You know, everybody's aware. Everybody knows that there's this guy named Joseph uh, Coney, and he's some madman and, you know, uses child soldiers and all that uh, mumbo-jumbo. But nobody's actually going to go to Uganda and kill this guy or bring him to justice. This issue needs action and aid, not awareness. Charity Navigator is a website where you can browse uh, charities and their legitimacy and analyze them and all that. And on that website... Invisible Children has a rating of 2 out of 4 stars compared to other charities that have mostly ratings of 4 out of 4, 3 out of 4. But uh, basically, they lack an external audit committee, and that's the whole reason why uh, Charity Navigator is giving them this low rating. And what that means is that uh, Invisible Children refused to have an actual auditing committee um, analyze their expenses and their income and all that. Uh, they only had one accountant that was uh, in partnership with them. Uh, that one accountant did all of the auditing for them. So now we can see how much of your money is actually going to children in Uganda and in the rest of Africa where this stuff is happening. Uh, only 32% of your money is actually going there, and maybe even less. Now let's talk more about the uh, conflicts in the region as well as military intervention. The group's aim is a direct U.S. military intervention in the region uh, to wipe out or capture Joseph Kony. Because of this, they also support the local armies in the region, such as the Ugandan Army and the Sudan People's Liberation Army. So when you donate your money to Invisible Children, your money goes through the Ugandan Army or the Sudan People's Liberation Army before it gets to the children. So... You know, you, you never know what may happen along the way. 
You never know how much of your money is actually going to go into the children. It might be 5%, 10%, 3%, 1%, you know? What's ironic is that the Ugandan army was accused of looting and rape by a large number of NGOs, which are non-governmental organizations. A representative of the UN said that there were several girls, some as young as 12, involved in prostitution with Ugandan soldiers. Another report based on UN investigations from field staff states that it is not unusual to see girls and women sneak into the Ugandan base at night or find Ugandan army personnel personnel embroiled in brawls over girls and women. One particular case cited sexual violence by Ugandan soldiers against a 15-year-old girl named Mary. Ugandan soldiers rescued her and brought her to a clinic nearly dead in Sudan. What really happened was that the Ugandan soldiers assaulted her, gang raped her, and impregnated her before taking her to the clinic. There are countless of other sexual assault cases linked to the Ugandan army and Ugandan soldiers in the area. Now a little more about the Sudan People's Liberation Army, the SPLA. Here is a picture uh, of the CEO and the founders of Invisible Children standing beside SPLA troops. The SPLA were active in a large civil war in Sudan that had several million casualties as a result of that civil war. Uh, when they demobilized during 2005, when they declared peace, the UN Children's Agency estimated that the SPLA, the Sudan People's Liberation Army that the Invisible Children supports, had discharged 20,000 child soldiers and had 900 left in 2005. So basically, the organization that Invisible Children supports and the organization that you saw was standing right beside the founders of Invisible Children uh, had child soldiers which the Invisible Children is fighting against. How ironic. And on top of that, the United Nations still can't confirm that the SPLA is child soldier free, so they may still have child soldiers even though they're supported by the Invisible Children. Invisible Children, which leads Kony 2012, supports military intervention. Kony has been around for a while. The US command in Africa, called AFRICOM, has tried stopping him countless times and failed, each time provoking a ferocious response and increased slaughter. The issue with fighting a man who uses a child army is that his bodyguards are children, plain and simple. Any efforts to capture or kill him will almost certainly result in many children's deaths. How does that make any sense if Invisible Children is trying to stop the killing of innocent children, uh, but they're also promoting military intervention against an army of child soldiers? People of Invisible Children, do you think before you speak? People that support Invisible Children support what they're fighting against. I don't understand. The Sudan's People's Liberation Army and the Ugandan Army are both supported by Kony 2012, even though the Sudan's People's Liberation Army used and still may be using child soldiers, as well as the Ugandan Army, which rapes and loots. All this means that people that support Kony 2012 simply also support looting, rape, child soldiers, how ironic, and the killing of children through military intervention. Now, awareness is great if you're calling people to action with it, but manipulation of facts isn't. The Council of Foreign Relations published an article on their website about the Kony 2012 campaign. Here is a quote directly from the article. During the past decade, US-based activists concerned about the LRA have successfully, if quietly, pressured the George W. Bush and Obama administrations to take a side in the fight between the LRA and the Ugandan government. Among the most influential of advocacy groups focusing specifically on the LRA are the Enough Project, the Resolve Campaign, the Canadian-based group Guluwak, and the media-oriented group Invisible Children. Huh, seen that name before. Older agencies from Human Rights Watch to World Vision have also been involved. In their campaigns, such organizations have manipulated facts, listen to this, manipulated facts for strategic purposes, exaggerating the scale of LRA abductions and murders, and emphasizing the LRA's use of innocent children as soldiers, and portraying Kony, a brutal man to be sure, as uniquely awful, a Kurtz-like embodiment of evil. They rarely refer to the Ugandan atrocities or those of Sudan's People's Liberation Army, such as attacks against civilians or looting of civilian homes and businesses, or the complicated regional politics fueling the conflict. So in the end, Invisible Children has been known and is known to manipulate facts for personal gain and to raise more awareness. Simply put, that's called brainwashing. Joseph Kony is not the next Hitler. The conflicts in Uganda and in the region are highly complex, not one-dimensional, so you can't just go ahead and point fingers at people 
without knowing the full story. They can't be solved by making a bunch of 30 minute films, spamming your Facebook or telling your friends, giving your money and public support to invisible children so they can spend it on violent military intervention and movie number 12 isn't helping. I don't support bringing Joseph Coney to justice. I support bringing Joseph Coney and all of the other evil degenerates on our planet to justice. Every single one. If you're gonna take out one, why not to get all the rest? What I don't support though is invisible children's brainwashing and manipulation of facts for personal gain. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the CEO of Invisible Children be riding in an expensive sports car being praised as a world-renowned filmmaker. So please, people, do some research before supporting a cause.